Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Mavic 3, the DJI Mavic 3. Today is going to be the in-depth flight test. So I got three batteries in here. Remember, this is the Flymore combo. So this is probably going to be a long one, um, over an hour. So just be ready, but we're going to go through everything possible. Also got my son over here. I'm going to be tracking Ken. My son Ken, thanks for coming over to help out. He's going to be riding a uh, electric skateboard around the path here and also going to do that tracking so anyway guys get ready for the mavic 3 in-depth flight test all right guys so what i usually like to do is just from unpacking it in the field to booting it up and starting to fly it uh, i usually like to do that in my videos so we're going to do that whole process right here now, if you've seen my unboxing, or if you haven't, go ahead and check it out. I'll have the card pop up here, and I'll also be down in the description down below, so you can check out the products I'm reviewing here, which is the Mavic 3, and also the unboxing where I really showcase the bag as well. You can actually turn this whole thing into a backpack. I'm not going to really go over that right now, but as you can see, we have backpack straps and everything. You know, you're getting what you pay for. This is not a cheap drone. It's pretty expensive. This was like $3,000 for this entire Flymore combo. So, uh, you know, I'm glad they have a cool bag like this. Just by looking at the bag, it did come with three batteries, but it looks like you could put three, four in this little slot here next to the controller, five have one in the drone, and then you have extra room on top. So you could essentially probably take like you know up to like almost six or seven batteries i don't have the home charger in here because i have so many batteries already charged up but if you did want to have the whole charger and everything in the bag you're probably going to be limited to about four or five batteries here's the controller i'll take out one battery for now and the drone and that's really all i need to get started here i really like to use the ipad mini for drones because it's the nice um you know, median between too large of a screen and too small of a screen. This is that little lightweight clamp extension that I really like to use on my controllers. So the controller pops up like this. And all this does is enables you to put in a larger iPad mini. Otherwise, you're only gonna be able to put in something like a regular phone. The Mavic 3 comes with this cool like muzzle type of camera guard. It basically protects the whole drone locks in all the propellers so really liking what they did here as well just basically a clip that clips around the back holds all the propellers in so we unclip it there pull off the uh, top part here and the front you can see how that whole thing just comes off nice and easy and i want to open up the legs first so the top front go open first and then we pull open the back down bottom just like the old drones and there we go. So you can see how that Mavic is looking fantastic. There is that big old dual camera. Remember the top is for zooming way in and then the, the bottom camera is what's gonna give you that high definition pictures and video. I like to use these SanDisk Extreme Pros. I got a 64 gig in here and you just pop it right in the bottom here. It looks like it goes in upside down and just wanna make sure that clicks in. If you don't have the Flymore combo in the multi-charger, you're gonna to have to charge your battery through the drone with that USB-C port, USB-C port right there when you have the battery in. Otherwise, you can use that multi-charger that comes with the Flymore combo. Now we just have to put our battery in here. So inserting that with the connector down so it connects into the craft. Give it a good push and you hear that snap and click. And that thing is ready pretty much to power up. I just like to open my propellers up just to give it a little less stress on uh, spin up, you know what I mean? So it doesn't like vibrate those motors unnecessarily. You don't have to, but I think it's good to do that. Take our connecting cable, push it towards the back, take our iPad mini and just go ahead and push this up and in center it take our sticks that are in the bottom of the controller screw those on nice and tight the button on the back we're going to just do a press press and hold that's going to turn on just going to be watching the gimbal there and you could hear that boot up chime and let's just wait for that gimbal to do what it needs to do now this does have the latest update 
if you watch my unboxing I did the whole update so you can see that process as well go ahead and check out that video but the drone is booted up now all we got to do is boot up the controller so press press and hold and you see this these lights here are just blinking that means there's no connection just waiting for them to turn on solid and that means it's connected to the drone. Since I already have the DJI Fly app installed here, all I need to do, and I've connected previously as the unboxing, uh, we'll go ahead and just plug right in. I hear a chime on my iPad, and it takes us right in to the interface. As you can see here, that's the storage location switch. I'm just gonna confirm it to go to the SD card. Hey, how's it going? Uh, thanks for tuning in and let's fly this Mavic 3. Before we fly, of course, I want to do the uh, compass calibration, right guys? So up here on the top, we have these three little dots just in the safety tab up top. You go all the way down to compass. I know it says normal, but I want to calibrate it. I did calibrate the IMU uh, at home on a level surface. You might want to do that. I'm just pressing start here. And I'm just setting the iPad down and it says, I'm gonna pick this drone up and look at the iPad to see what it's telling me to do. And I just wanna basically rotate it counterclockwise in like a level plane. Okay, that was quick. Now I turn the face up. You just follow the pictures on the screen of the tablet or your device. And I wanna keep turning it counterclockwise while it's facing up and that's it look at that we are all set to go it doesn't tell us anything like restart to after calibration so i'm not going to do any of that basically leaving everything this is all from the factory guys how it is from the factory it's saying i have uh, 51 minutes and 14 seconds of 4k 60 video so if you wanted to change that you just press on that 4k down there and then you can scroll through you know, we could change it to 30 if you wanted to save uh, some storage. So let's see if we went 30. Watch how our storage changes. Now we have a one hour and three minutes of record time. I think what we're going to do is just, just have it at 4K60 from the factory. If we run out of storage during this whole review, I'll just go ahead and pop in another card. I have a few with me. So I'm going to go ahead and start recording by pressing this button over here since we're in video mode so recording in 4k 60 there and as you can see i'm using this roller here on the top left of the controller and that's how we can roll our gimbal up and down okay i'm going to take off just from the screen here so i'm pushing on this arrow all the way on the left and i'm just going to hold in take off and here he goes so launching up there we go okay well the sensors are look like they're active now so I'm glad that kind of uh, fixed it. And I can hear some beeping. And as I move away, that beeping has stopped. Cool, so a little bit of different sounding on the beeps and all that stuff. As I get closer, you can see how it launched. Let's see what it thinks it's at. 3.9 feet, so just about four feet high it's launching at. I'm gonna pick it up just a little bit so I can bring it in my hat cam view. And let's really check this thing out. It's always cool to kind of see these things in the air flying, you know. Getting kind of later in the evening now, so, you know. Might be a little bit, uh, yeah, right into the sunlight. We're not going to be able to see much with this. Whoa! <laughs> well, at least we know that those uh, rubber tips on the propellers are working. I just hit it with the camera and it seems to have helped it a bit. Go ahead and get a bottom shot. Cool. Oh, and the drone actually kind of was trying to avoid that. Let's get it from a top shot. That's how that thing looks when it's flying. Pretty cool Mavic 3. As you can hear, it's super duper quiet. So this has got to be the utmost quietest drone that DJI makes at this point. I've never heard a quieter drone than this. It just has a really low buzzing tone to it. Not annoying at all. And maybe those rubber tips actually help that a bit, like dampening that vibration whine, you know, inside of the propellers. So really looking good. You can really see from this angle too, how those motors are really tilted like this way and this way. 
from the back. And then from the side, the front ones look pretty straight up and the rear ones are pointing just into the back a little bit. So, man, this thing is, gosh, it's just looking really great right now. Anyway, gonna do a little walk around to the front, check it out. Actually, I'm gonna spin this thing around so the sun's in the right direction. And remember guys, this is 4K uh, 60 frames per second. Maybe actually this way, this would be better. So hey, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate you guys tuning into the channel and watching my videos. Remember, this is gonna be a long one because we're doing a whole lot of stuff on the Mavic 3, so. Let's continue flying. So it's looking great. It's maintaining its position perfectly. And we're also gonna um, test the return to home and the life of this battery. So it's saying on the top, if you look at this over on the very top right of the screen, it's saying I can fly for 34 minutes. Okay, so that's gone down. You know, we did the compass cal on this battery. I'm just gonna go up to give it the benefit of the doubt. Go up about 30 feet or so. Okay, and let it sit there for a second. And what the camera should be doing are, you know, really kind of assess the ground. And so when it does have that precision return to home, it kind of knows what that area is it's gonna, it's gonna land in. So wouldn't have thought any different. This thing is flying just fantastic. And as I walk around it, have, do you see on the screen there, it has this red reticle on the iPad screen. So it knows exactly where an obstacle is as I go around I'm seeing the red in the iPad screen I will have that recording for you make sure yep that's all recording for you guys okay so let's fly this thing around I'm gonna do a punch up we're gonna go straight up see how fast it's going man it's just so like precise what's our mile per hour 13 going up and I'll have that video up guys so you can see that I'm just gonna take it like, you know, a couple hundred feet. And you can see how stable the video is when I th full throttle up and now I'm full throttling down. It's going the same speed coming down, negative 13 miles per hour. I like that little negative there. You know what I mean? That negative is a good indicator that it's losing altitude. So I was holding it, it just started to slow down and now it's really slowing down gradually, letting off right there. And yeah, that's just fantastic. Super precision. Deviated a little bit from its home point, but that's okay. We're going to test that when we return to home, right? Let's give it a little forward back in normal mode. Speed test here. We'll go up so it's not trying to avoid the ground at all. Wow, so when you're turning, it wants to try to face up a little bit. That's interesting. You see that? Let me bring it lower so you can kind of see what it's doing. When I turn hard, the whole drone kind of tilts up. See that? Kind of a little jerky there, but you'll be the judge of that video. Whoa, it saw me and it kind of just stopped. So we're gonna do obstacle avoidance testing too. I just wanna see how fast it's flying in this normal mode. This is how fast it's turning. Pretty docile and slow. Just saw me there and was gonna adjust. So in the A-Pass, I do have it to set to stop right now. If you look here in the um, safety, you can also put um, A-Pass to bypass flight assistance. So we'll just do brake for now. That's how it comes out of the box. And let's just do a little uh, braking right now. I, always, I know this is not the smartest thing to do, but I always use myself as the test subject. I can always dip out of the way if it doesn't stop. So I'm gonna come right at me here. Full throttle forward, kind of at the, the sun's to the side here. Go. Yep, sees me and that's as close as it's gonna go. I have my thumb stick all the way up and it's not gonna come any farther forward. So that's what the stop um, option is. Let's try Reversing in, same thing. We'll go out a little further so it can pick up some speed. So just gonna come right at me, reversing in here. Trying to get in front of it. Yeah, so those sensors are working great. 
still holding back and it is not going anywhere. So the real test now is if it'll do that same thing when we're coming in sideways, right guys? So let's go farther away sideways. Okay, here we go. Never done this before. Let's go sideways right at me. Nice. Looks like it gets a little closer and then stops, but I have my right stick pitched all the way to the left and it is not gonna hit me. So these 360 obstacle avoidance sensors are working very, very, very well. Let's try the other side just to make sure we do a full test here and pushing all the way right now. Coming right at me, gonna try to walk right into it. And it is not gonna get any closer than that, okay? Fantastic. So that's just, it's about four or five feet away. So it will stop. Great. So let's see if we're just racing around, going kind of fast and come right at me as fast as it can go. I just have full stick forward, come down a little. Yeah, so there's no way, it's not gonna hit. Awesome. <laughs> All right, now what I wanna do real quick since we're doing this is go into the obstacle avoidance bypass. And what that'll do is it'll automatically fly around the obstacle, okay? Let's try that again. So we'll do the same thing we've been doing. It'll come right at me. Full throttle forward. I'm not touching anything. It's going around me on its own. It sees me, no problem whatsoever. Let's try that one more time. We'll come around, come down, try to point it right at me. There's no way I can't, even if I wanted to steer it at me, it'll, it just takes over controls and goes around. So that's fantastic. We'll flip it around here and we'll come straight back. All right, same thing using the rear obstacle avoidance sensors. Let's see how good it is here. So pulling back full throttle, trying to steer it into myself and it just keeps going that way. Yeah, it just wouldn't um, steer into me. So that's great. Let's try that kind of into the sun here and then it's gonna be against the sun, kind of low. Boom, full throttle back. It's already going to, yeah, I just cannot into myself so it'll basically take over controls to go around objects really like that so that a pass is working fantastic we'll do one side one remember you got to test the sides as well so flying sideways right into me trying to make it hit me no it's just gonna avoid awesome okay so all that stuff's working fantastic guys all right so what do we want to do now we want to, how much we got? We still got 23 minutes on this battery. Let me see if my camera's still even going. This might be uh, testing my camera equipment to see how long this can uh, record for. Let's go ahead, while we're doing this, let's go ahead and switch into Cine mode. Remember this button right here? I'm gonna press to Cine. And let's see how fast it goes in Cine mode. Full throttle forward here. Okay, it almost goes the same speed, 10 miles per hour, but the turning is super slow. You see that? I'll come down so you can see that. So the up and down is super slow and the forward isn't much slower. But look at that yaw turning, watch this. Cine mode, boom. Really slow there, okay? And let's punch it up. Whoa, it tried to get away from me when I was punching up. That was interesting. Mile per hour is only two miles per hour going up. Two miles per hour coming down. And about 10 going forward and back in city mode. You know what we didn't test in normal mode? I didn't quite catch the speed. So let's try that again. Well, it is quite a bit faster. Let's see. We'll just go straight. Yeah, so we're going like 30, 32 miles per hour. Let's come back. Don't really want to fly over any houses and stuff. Full throttle back here.
Wow, did you hear that? Interesting. So it's hitting like its speed limit and then kind of stopping as it comes back. That was interesting. So we'll come down again. And so that was city and normal mode. We'll do sports mode speed flying. And now I would assume, see I'm pushing, trying to push into myself. It did that on its own. So yeah, that A pass is working just great. Okay guys, let's switch into, get over here so we're not facing the camera into the sun. Let's switch into sport mode. So on the top here, we still have normal sensors. As soon as we switch into sport, look at that, turns them all off. You see that on the top right? All obstacle avoidance sensors are now off. It will not go around me, watch. Let's just do that. Forward. Nope, doesn't even know I'm there. That would have hit me if I didn't move out of the way. All right, let's do a punch up. Sorry about my crazy flying. I'm just trying to do this as quick as possible. Let's do a punch up. Three, two, one, punch. Seventeen, eighteen miles per hour, just about going up. Turn over here so you can see the West Maui Mountains. Maximum flight altitude reached. Okay, that got up to four hundred feet quick, huh? <laughs> so seventeen, eighteen miles per hour going up, and let's see coming down. They're limiting it, limiting it. Sorry, coming down uh, to thirteen. So remember, in the normal, in the cine. It went the same speed up and down. It can go faster going up, but it, it's going slower coming down in sport. Already slowed down on its own and I just let off the controller. So fantastic. It looks like they're just getting more tuned in, more precise with each model that DJI um, releases. So looking really good guys. Gosh, we still have 18, 19, around 20 minutes to fly. Usually I'd be like freaking out because the battery would be um, running out right now, but this thing is doing fantastic. Okay, and uh, let's see the turning speed in sport. So a little faster, you know, that's gonna get you dizzy quick. And of course the um, side to side speed, that's gonna be much faster. And all the stopping and all that stuff, right, is gonna be, um, take longer to stop. Let's see how fast this thing can go. Try to fly over that golf course maybe so we're not really flying over much houses. Right about there. And let's just see how fast this thing gets going. It's going with the wind a little right now. Looked like it got up to about 40... 45, 46... About 46 miles per hour, guys. That's sort of 47, sort of going with the wind. I'm just gonna pull the stick directly back all the way. And let's see how fast it starts going. Same direction, full stick back. Going a little slower because it's actually a couple miles per hour against it up there, okay? So like with the wind, we're we're going, wow, look at that flight time up there. It really calculates on the fly real time. There we are. Come on back here. Right above me. Man, that thing is coming down quick and it's so awesome because the cameras see the ground right at about 10 feet and it just slows way down. Doesn't get out of control. So I don't know if you saw when I was coming back full speed like that, it was calculating up at the top corner up here. Oh, well, there we go. It was calculating if we um, kept going at that speed using that much power, I'd only have like seven minutes left of flight time. And now that we're hovering, look at that time up there. It's going up to 17 something, 17 and a half minutes we have left. I like this new feature here. It's telling us on the screen um, until RTH, how long do you have to fly? Can you fly at this speed until it's going to ask you to return home? Um, 
and then we've got 13 minutes until force landing and then 16 minutes until battery is fully depleted so I guess that's until it's gonna really force won't let you control it land and then just shut off so it's really showing you that top number up here is really showing you the ultimate time you have to fly but I've pushed I've pushed these even farther than that in some of my, my other tests. So we'll see on the range test on this. I am going to do a range test, guys. So don't miss that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and you uh, hit that notification so you can see the ultimate range test on the Mavic 3. Okay, going to switch back into normal, guys. We still have 16 minutes to fly. So, man, you're going to be able to do a whole lot with this drone. Let's try to run into Kian here. Kian, I'm going to try to run into you, okay? It won't hit you because it has it has a it has a pass. It will not hit you. So I'm gonna come back here. It's trying to avoid me as I come back. That's funny. We're gonna get really low. Line Kian's chair up. See if it can do uh, a pass around an obstacle when you're this low. So full stick forward. Yeah, it just went up immediately. And then as soon as it got over him, it looks like it's just maintaining that height until you tell it to come back down. So it will not hit Kian. <laughs> Putting the kids in danger. I can't even, yeah, I can't even fly into him. It's just, it's locking me out of the controls as far as going right at him. So that's, that's just fantastic, man. Awesome. Let's see how low we can fly before landing. So getting down here, you see how I can reach this minimum height of 0.7 feet. Cameras are looking at the ground. It knows that if I hold this down, it's gonna try to land. So I don't wanna do that. I just wanna be right up there, 1.7 feet. Now I'm gonna hit forward. And it, it goes up on its own a little bit because it's, it has that A-pass on. All that obstacle avoidance, okay? So it will not be able to fly super low in A-pass mode, okay guys? So if you wanna do that, you're gonna to have to turn off A-pass and you'll be able to fly really low. And here's how we do that. So we go up here, turn it off. That stopped all the beeping, but also all the obstacle avoidance is off, right? So now I can go that same height Right now it thinks it's negative 0.3 feet for some reason. But um, the sensor should be seeing the ground and that's why it's not letting me land unless I hold the controller down. Okay, so now if you wanna get some cool like shots on the ocean going really slow and over the ocean or fast over the ocean or over the ground, that bottom sensor should still prevent it from hitting the ground, but it's not gonna avoid it from hitting anything else, right? So don't get in the way. So just kind of cruising really fast over the ground and it seems to be doing really good. It's not letting itself get too low. Shoot pass right here. Yeah. So I have the A-pass off, but I'm in normal mode. So you can do a nice stable flight really low without worrying about hitting the ground. Of course, other obstacles it's gonna hit, right? So probably a good idea to keep that on. Let's just try it in brake since we have so much battery power. Let's try to put brake on instead of going around obstacles and see what it does. So if I'm this low, pushing full throttle forward, there's one way to do it, but it's super slow. You see how slow that's going? Doing a full turn. It's in brake mode, so sees me it's just gonna break see that so unless you have that um, bypass on it will not go around objects so I put bypass on I'm gonna push forward it went up and to the right to avoid me awesome what I really want to do is see if it avoids me if I get too close to it when it's sitting still hands off the controller Nope, 
So it's not going to avoid obstacles coming at it when it's stopped, okay? Only when it's moving or if something is underneath it. Yeah, see how that's going up on its own? Because it thinks my hand is probably the ground or something. Okay, so that's how that thing works. Okay, so we got about nine more minutes to fly. Um, maybe we'll just shoot up here, take some pictures, and then we'll kind of get into those advanced modes, all right? Tracking and all that stuff with the other two batteries. So I'm gonna fly up here, get a good view of the West Maui Mountains. Pretty high up here. Vision sensor's blurry. Wow. So for some reason it thinks the sensors are blurry, but I know they're clean. So make sure you wipe those with cloth, you know, just in case. Okay guys, let's go up here. We'll, we'll go ahead and just do kind of a, like a manual panoramic shot of the surroundings so you can see how this camera's working. Remember this is 4K 60, all in auto mode, auto camera mode. I'm just gonna do a full 360 really slow up here at 176 feet here in the park. And let's see how well this camera like auto adjusts its lighting and everything. Okay. So I'm just holding my left stick at a kind of a steady left locked in there just to give it a consistent rotation. So when you get better, of course, you can do all this stuff manually. You don't have to count on these, those auto features that we're gonna go into in just a little bit. Looking pretty good. Okay, so that's all the way back around to the mountain. So that was like a 360 panoramic. And now I wanna get into camera settings. So let's see if while we're recording, if I just press this camera button, we'll let it switch still. So they still haven't let you switch until you stop recording. So now I'm gonna press the stop on the screen on the right. That's gonna save that clip to the SD card in the craft. Then I'm gonna press this button to go to camera. Okay, let's take a couple shots. So I can either use, remember this little button up here, or I can just press it on the screen. We'll try the button first, just one click. And it's all autofocus right now. Remember if you wanted to um, adjust your lighting or the area of the screen you wanna focus in on, you can actually press parts of the screen. You see how the camera's auto adjusting for this wherever I'm clicking on the screen. So pretty cool, I just clicked on the clouds clicked on the mountain. All right, wants to return home pretty so pretty soon. We're going to cancel that because I want to do a return home. But see how I'm clicking on the darker portions and it's auto brightening and then I'm going to take a photo on that kind of auto bright. Kind of go right into the sun here and take a photo in the sun clicking on the brightest part of the sun. Taking a picture there. Okay, how about the mountain? And remember we can push our camera up even higher if we want to 35 degrees, look at that. Look how high up we can go. So you can take pretty cool high up photos if you wanted to. I'm just gonna take a picture of the mountain up here. And photo. How about one just straight down at the park where we are? Or how about this park since it's a little greener? <laughs> Low battery, return to home promptly. Okay, I think that's enough photos. You guys will get the idea of how good this thing is in auto mode. Maybe the skate park right here. Clicking on it. Let's take a photo there. Okay guys, so I'm gonna return to home real quick and I'm gonna switch to video and just go ahead and start recording video. I'm gonna go out here and do a quick return to home, okay? Boy, that video looks really good. So I'm just gonna press and hold the hardware button. 
The uh, iPad just said go home, so it's going to come on home. Let's see what we can do while it's coming home. We can rotate the camera up and down. Cannot move the head left and right. So you only have camera control. There's where we are. You see us there? Wow, cool. It started actually coming down. It was coming down as it was... Um, coming in because it has those sensors on right let's see if it avoids key in there and still there the, ca the camera just went up to level on its own when it was probably about six feet high adjusting itself going very slow I just don't want to get too close to mess up its precision and there we go man that was uh, as precise as, as I've been in a long time so that was great and let's see, we've got 11% battery left. And I'll have the flight time, of course, as I usually do pop up on the screen, okay, guys? So you can see all that. Okay, guys, just booted back up. We are back in action. The sun actually came out, finally. It's a little bit um, getting evening time here, but uh, we're going to put this up in the air. And if we can't do any of those um, advanced features, because apparently they're maybe not available right now, We'll just start going into the tracking and hopefully that works and we'll do some tracking key and running around and then we'll get them on the skateboard there and see if we can go around the park and see how well it avoids these trees and stuff. So we're gonna do a manual launch this time and that's gonna be both sticks down and in. Okay, and you wanna check your propellers, which I already did. Check complete. So it won't launch after it tells you that you gotta do it again. Starts the propellers up. So I'm not gonna go anywhere until you launch. Okay, so I'm just gonna push up slowly. Whoa, that was weird. For a second there, it just had to like adjust itself. I think it was seeing those little spikes in the, uh, the launch pad because I couldn't push them in all the way because the ground is so dry today. All right, so we're up. I'm gonna go into the video and I wanna do the quick shots. All right, so with the Mavic 3, guys, can't do any of these quick shots like you can with the other drones. So this is a little bit of a negative. DJI always does this. They release a drone early um, to get it out by that year of Christmas, and they don't finish the software. So if there is one con right now on this thing, it's that incomplete software. Can I do hyperlapse? So this is all the stuff that I showed you earlier. On the screen, you see how it's saying feature coming soon. So I can't do any of this all in this right column here at all. I can do slow motion, it seemed, but we're just gonna do tracking with Kian. See if that works at all. See if we can even do tracking. I'm not even sure if this is gonna work, Kian, so just stay there still for a sec. Feature coming soon. <laughs> So you can't do anything except fly it and take pictures and photos manually. Man, what a disappointment. So guys, sorry, if you ordered this um, Mavic 3, you're not gonna be able to do any of these functions if you're a newbie at all. So what a bummer. The one thing I didn't test though, check this out, man. I totally forgot about this. Let's spin it around, let's start recording. Remember, the Mavic 3 has this incredible 28 time zoom function, which uses that other camera right up in here. See it here on my hat cam? This camera right here does the zooming, that does the picture and video. So let's get up here, and since we can't do any of the features we're supposed to be able to do, let's get up here kind of high. Maybe we'll use this shed here as a... Uh, point of interest and I want to show you this 28 time zoom feature so while recording can't switch to the zoom lens okay so I guess that's if you want to use the zoom you have to stop recording I want to make sure my iPad is recording all this for you guys yes it is and so you have to not be recording and then you go into the zoom, see how it um, switched to explore mode, 28 times zoom popped up on the screen there. So now it switches to the lower quality zoom camera. 
And here we go. So you can either take your fingers like this and you can stretch to zoom in. See that? And just look how far this zooms in. Now it does that skip. Did you see that? Between like four times and seven times. Look at that, that jump. So that's kind of, to me, that's a little bit, you know, to be desired. You want to have it smooth transition. So maybe they can work on something in the software. But if I keep zooming, look how close I can zoom in here. I can also move my gimbal. I'm just pushing up on that roller to get right to the corner of that shed. And then I'm also turning the drone's head just to really center in there. And that's maximum right there. You see on the right over here, it says 28 times zoom, autofocus. And this is in the binocular mode. So pretty awesome. If you didn't, didn't want to use your fingers on the screen like this to pinch and zoom, what you can also do is you can hold function here on the controller, hold it down in, and then with your left finger, rotate that gimbal control to the left. Zooms out. Okay, holding it all the way. You see that little skip jump, kind of lame. Still holding the function button, gonna rotate that roller to the right. And that zooms in, so you can rotate that as slow as you want. See how it's going slow? Or push it all the way, and it goes, that's as fast as it goes to zoom in. So it looks like it's a digital zoom when it gets to a certain point. It might have like four times optical, something around there. I don't know the exact specs on that, but um, at least we know that it has this cool zoom feature. Let me test this. Some of the um, other DJI drones, you can actually hold your finger on the screen. So I'm gonna hold my finger right in the center. And I'm gonna move my finger from side to side. That doesn't work. Does it? Yes, it does. I'm sorry, I, was, I had my finger in the focus area. All right, cool. So with this drone also, like other ones, you can hold your finger on the screen and then you see that um, horizontal and vertical gauge show up and then you can slide your finger around. And what this is doing guys, is it's, it's uh, tilting the gimbal, whoops, can't track, tilting the gimbal up and down by just sliding your finger. And let's see if it'll go left and right. That was all the way left it could go. So we have a total of a certain amount of degrees left to right, which is pretty small. Looked like it was only about 10 degrees. Did you see that? Okay, so you're not gonna be able to tilt left and right, barely at all with this camera. But at least you have that ability to do it partially in the gimbal. So the drone could just be sitting there and we could be moving around. Let's see these guys skateboarding. Since we can't do any tracking or orbiting or any of that stuff, which I'm kind of disappointed about because they need to update their software. Let's see if we can do some of this cool stuff um, on this skate park here. So actually I wasn't even recording. Let's see if we can record in this binocular mode. Okay, there we go. Press and record. And let's see what happens if it records this to the SD card. I'll go ahead and have that up. I'm just using the function key and zooming in option right now. And just kind of zooming in to the skate park. Once you get your zoom, remember you can either touch and hold the screen and move your gimbal around a little bit, left, right. Remember that's only like five degrees on both sides or six degrees left and right. And this is without moving the drone at all. The gimbal is just going left and right. Or you can push up and down with your finger on the screen. So pretty cool that you have that option. Or of course you can just use the roller without pressing the function button to move the gimbal up and down. When you do press the function and hold it, then you're zooming in and out. So let's zoom all the way in and see how much from this height of 134 feet. Now that's pretty, zoom pretty far in there, man. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna get a little higher so that 
we don't really hear this thing buzzing over our head. Get out of the audible range of everybody. We'll go all the way up there and keep that um, skate parking view. Remember, we're just hovering right around us. We're not, we're not over the skate park in any way. We're just basically hovering right here in the grass directly up. So, all right, let's see. Let's zoom in here again. Zooming in. That's cool. And um, if you wanted to kind of zoom and move the gimbal around at the same time, you're probably going to use let off the function and use the gimbal with your left roller and then just use your fingers you know what i mean to like zoom in really quick like that okay zooming in a little bit too far and we can't really see this guy doing tricks let's just watch him do a couple tricks manually kind of track him Cool. So I am recording this. Uh, what, is, what it's recording in, I don't know. I don't think it is the 4K because it's using the other camera. Cool, man. We'll zoom back out. And so that's the zooming feature, guys, on this thing. I don't know if you guys can see that. As I move my finger to the left, see that thing moving? Just barely. And then, of course, it has a full up and down control if you wanted to use your finger. That's all the way up, using the finger still, dragging on the screen here. And then you can go all the way down. If you wanna center that gimbal, you double press the function button. So I'm gonna double press this one and look at the camera and see if it completely centers it. Double press, it went all the way down, double press, all the way up and it also brings it to center in all directions okay so we're going to do this guys we're going to manually try to track kian since unfortunately i know i keep saying that but kind of a bummer the uh tracking modes aren't even active so i'm just going to keep it up like right in the tree tree view right here you know and just kind of manually do everything. If you look at the level I'm at, I'll be running into those trees if the A-pass doesn't work. So here we go. I'm just going to keep it at this height. And I'm just going to track him manually the best I possibly can. Okay, guys? So let's see if it works. He's slowing down there. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch into cine mode here. I just switched the button over to cine mode. And let's see what happens. I'm trying to track him over the tree. It's going up on its own, awesome. Oh, that's him way over there, isn't it? Okay, so I didn't have to worry about the height there. It just completely avoided the obstacle on its own. Looks like somebody's wondering what he's doing. I'm gonna come down a bit and try to see if it avoids these trees and kind of keep following him. So it's turning left and right on its own. I'm pushing full forward here, trying to keep up with him. Maybe cine mode wasn't the best to <laughs> track them I in. Mean, I'm gonna switch back to normal. And let's go down and try to hit this tree. Okay, there he is. I'm just pushing forward. It's turning left on its own. Not gonna hit that. I'll try to get a little closer. Awesome. Get in here. Okay, I'm just pushing forward, guys. It's doing everything else on its own. Whew. This isn't no Skydio. There he is. Okay, so it did the up and down, left and right, all on its own. And all I had to do was steer the drone and track him basically just pointing the head left and right as I'm pushing forward and moving the gimbal up and down. Uh, right there, I just turned around, guys. I was pointed all the way 
in the opposite direction of where the drone is and I didn't see any video hiccup whatsoever so let's continue to track him he's just gonna do a loop basically doing good Ken doing good seems a little washed out to me I don't know you guys be the judge of this but um, I think it turns this way there he is speed up a little bit so remember I'm not touching any height right now if it hits a tree it hits a tree I'm just steering the head and going straight it's moving up and down on its own it looks like it went under those trees on that hill coming up a little while ago it went under those trees on its own because it was already pretty low okay so this is kind of a steep hill he's going down I'll try to go to the right a little so I'm not so this is where the uh, talent comes in if you can fly diagonally manually <laughs> And track somebody because come on DJI your tracking's not working on your new Mavic 3 yet Can you get that working? Cool, so not gonna fly over those people Okay Awesome Oh, looks like he might be done. Keep going, I guess. I'll bring it a little lower this time. Into the tree level. Looks like he wants to just keep going. Okay, it's moving up on its own a bit. It senses the obstacle and it's going up on its own. You can kind of see him through the trees there. There he is. That was a pretty good track. So definitely want it in normal mode so I have the speed here to track him. There we go. That was a good track. Just going to kind of keep it at this height. It looks like he just wants to keep going. I'll kind of keep letting them go. I went down a little bit. Just want to see what this thing will do. So you can hear that beeping. That means it sees. Okay, that starting and stopping is just my right thumb. <laughs> yep, so it went up and to the left a little on its own. Cool. So that's, that's the reason why the um, auto tracking is so cool when it's going to be working. Let's see what it does with this tree. Yeah, it's just sensing everything. Now it's going way up on its own, up and over. Did I lose him? There he is. Let them get a little ahead and we'll do more of a sideways track like this. Cool. So what I was saying was with the auto tracking guys, I'm not sure how it would have done through the trees, but it may have tried to keep them in sight and got around so it could see them. But with the auto tracking, you have the ability to do orbits and track at different angles. And it's really hard to do that manually. Um, I mean, I've been flying for years and I can't even do that. You know what I mean? So, this is kind of as good as I can get. Just kind of clicking on him, making sure the focus and the exposure is as good as it can be. So, I'm just gonna maintain Wee, go key and go. Just doing the same route. Watch if I pull down here. I have my stick all the way down and it is not letting me run into this tree. Okay? So, 
he's going to go on this other track it seems I don't really want to fly over any people so I'll keep it kind of high I'll do kind of a high track okay there he is remember we're in normal mode and now there's no really obstacles to avoid right now but I'm just trying to see just really how precise and smooth I can track him of course he's slowing down for people which is always good and courteous you know if you're on a walking path and you're on a skateboard or a bike it's always good to just give the people that are walking um, the benefit of the doubt there he is so I'm just keeping it kind of high and not flying over people in this area you know what I mean just out of courtesy Nobody in the tennis court there. Bringing the gimbal back down to center on him. Woo! So, just a manual track, guys. So I hope DJI can get their act together and get these, um, basically all of the advanced features working. Uh, at least the obstacle avoidance and everything seems to be working good. But, uh, you know, they really need to get that other stuff working. Let's maintain a track on him. There he goes. I'll try to do a frontal track manually. So just trying to keep that. It's kind of cool how that uh, focus reticle, that orange thing is right in the middle. So at least you know where you want that to be on the subject, you know even if you're kind of manually tracking. But anyway, so the sun's coming down and the sun's really shining on him right now. It's about, I don't know, 5 p.m. Sun is setting in the sky. Well, he looks like he's done. So, awesome, man. What we'll do is, I think we're gonna finish it up. And I'm gonna just do a, um, I'm gonna fly out here a ways. Wow, the camera came down on its own. When I went forward, I put it all the way high. Well, there's the sunset everybody's watching. Looking pretty nice. Good job, Kian. That was awesome, man. Was it fun? I was getting like gnats in my throat. Gnats in your throat? Yeah, it's like a wave of gnats. <laughs> Insect problems. Maximum flight altitude reached. Okay. So, man, we... Oh, geez. We only have like three minutes left to fly. Probably because I'm going out there, so hardcore. All right, I'm gonna press return to home, guys. Um, I think I pressed the hardware button here last time. I'm gonna press the software button there, and then you just have to hold in return to home here until you hear the beep in. So let's that, let this thing return to home. And I think that's gonna wrap it up for this long <laughs> review. I know that was probably over an hour, but at least you guys know how this thing's working. They do need to update to make a lot of these advanced functions work. Actually, pretty much all of them. Remember, I can tilt the camera up and down when it's returning home. And I like how when the A-pass is on, it comes down at an angle instead of just going super high and then coming straight down. It actually comes down at a cool angle. Wow, so really? Okay, doing all that stuff, it got kind of tweaked off of its launch point. So you see where it's going to land that time. Landing in the grass, okay guys? So, we'll stop recording, and I guess that's going to be it. We'll test the slow-mo when uh, they activate those other functions, uh, so we have more to do on the, uh, I guess we'll call that, advanced function test of the Mavic 3 video so as far as deviation from its launch point i know i did launch what could be influencing it is i did launch manually and remember i didn't go up to a height of like 30 feet so the cameras were just kind of right here looking at the landing pad and then i started to move away so it looks like that might um impact it quite a bit so if you really want to have that precision landing work really well make sure you fly up about 30 feet and you know what I want to do? I want to test that one last time. I want to try manually launch again. 
like I did last time and see if Yeah, maybe it has problems with the obstacle avoidance or something. Could have been the A-pass. But I'm just going to fly up to, you know, 30 feet like I did before when I auto-launched. Right here. Bring the camera down. I'm just going to fly, um, fly straight back to that park where there's nobody at over there. Right about here, so we're not in the road. Go home. Okay, and it auto-initiated return to home, perfect. You see that pop up on the screen? So I'm just gonna leave the camera pointing down and let's see if it's any better at um, precision landing now that I went up that higher altitude in uh, manual launch mode. SD card full, perfect timing. Brings the camera up on its own. There we go, well that's better. That is exactly where it lifted off. Maybe just a couple inches this way, just barely. Okay guys, well there you have it, fantastic. Um, let's go through a little pros and cons with the Mavic 3. Things that are really awesome, super quiet. It's got these rubberized tips here on the uh, propellers, so it'll help from injury. And I think possibly these are actually making it maybe a little quieter. That rubber is, is acting as like a sound dampener maybe. And so you don't hear that higher pitch buzzing. It's like a very low pitch. The sensors worked fantastic. So all of the sensors, the one thing we didn't test is the upward sensors. I didn't really go under any trees and try to go up, but it actually did on its own when Kean was riding on the back side of the park over there and it actually went in between that fence the trees and those houses were on the left it chose to go under the trees and so it would have been using these top sensors here to uh, check if the trees were in the way while i was just pushing forward that a pass was doing all that on its own so that would work fantastic the zoomable camera here that was pretty cool. Uses an entire different camera for the zooming. Looks like most of it is digital zoom, but it does have a little bit of optical zoom. That skipping, remember, between like four and seven times zoom was kind of irritating. Hopefully they can smooth that out with some updates. You guys be the judge of how good that camera looked in auto mode, actually both of them. I was just auto doing all that. Really cool how you can zoom. Move the gimbal left and right with your finger on the screen. Pretty cool drone. I think the most intriguing feature for me is how long this thing can fly, how quiet it is, and how compact and kind of lightweight this whole thing is getting. Just extremely stable. And it just seems like every drone they come out with, it just gets more and more precise as far as hovering, landing, stopping speed how the a pass works avoiding obstacles and all that stuff i like how they you know change the tone a little bit this one has a little bit of different tones even in their app the tones have changed a little it seems like it's a little more pleasing than um the past mavics and phantoms so anyway the big con guys was that none of those advanced um, features the quick shots the active track none of that tracking worked even the panoramic a time lapse none of that stuff worked yet for the mavic 3 so we're going to hit that in the uh, next review when they enable those but in the meantime we're going to do a full-on range test with this thing where i normally do my range test take it way the heck out there and since this thing can fly for almost 40 minutes now and it has the new ocusync on this thing i imagine that we're going to get probably as far as we've ever gone with the Mavic 3. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And by the way, Kian, you gotta give props to Kian, my son, for helping me out. Really appreciate it, man. He did a good job. Sorry for the gnats in the mouth. You are kind of flying it on that bottom stretch. Going pretty fast. I have to get my mullet flowing in the room. <laughs> did anybody say anything to you? No. no. I like how you're going really slow and there's people around. That was very courteous, good job. All right, guys, uh, I or me and Kian will see you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. I know it was long, but thanks for watching. Again, links in the description. 
what I review and the other videos, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.